All gameplay footage in this video was captured on a Ninja Inferno provided by Atomos, capturing gameplay and video footage at 4K resolution in 10-bit, up to 60 frames per second, and in HDR. For more information, visit Atomos.com. First things first, yes, I know this review is late. I apologize for that, but I figured it's better to do this late than never. Also, to be fair, this is actually the second time I'm reviewing this game. I did a written review for Super Street, which you can check out on their website. I'll leave a link in the description below. However, in this review, I'm going to try to touch on some things that I wasn't able to get into in my written review. Honestly speaking, I didn't know what to expect from The Crew 2. I never played the first game, and before getting a review copy, my only experience with The Crew 2 was with the demo I played at E3 2017. Back then, I was under the impression that the game was going to be a mostly linear experience all about mastering different types of motorsports. Turns out I was only partly right. As you probably know by now, The Crew 2 is an open world game, and yes, part of a very loose story is your character's quest to become champ of everything that has a motor, but that is truly only a small part of it. In reality, it seems that the Ivory Tower dev team at Ubisoft was looking to build a massive playground in which players can do just about anything and go just about anywhere at any time for any reason. That's good and bad. It's good because having a lot of freedom in an open world usually makes for a good experience. It's pretty liberating to know that if I can see it in the game, I can get there, even if I have to use different types of vehicles to do it. Speaking of, the different motorsports disciplines in the game are split up into motor families. There's street racing, pro racing, freestyle, and off-road. Speedboats, GT racing, and open wheel racing all reside in the pro racing family, for example, while something like drifting will be found under the street racing family. If you're looking for a different kind of family, maybe go see Vin Diesel. The bad part lies in the fact that since there isn't much of a story and there's little to no linearity at all, it's hard to know what you should do and when you should do it. You get guided a little bit at the beginning as you taste the start of just about every motor family, but eventually you're left to your own devices. My instinct was to just progress through each of the motor families one by one. The problem is you can only get so far before you can't progress without being at a certain popularity level. Each motorsport discipline and events within them have a required popularity level to enter, encouraging the player to earn followers and raise their popularity. So I would progress through a family, but eventually hit a roadblock in it where I couldn't progress any further until I increased my popularity. I didn't want to redo the stuff I just did just to earn followers, so I'd move on to the next family, but I wouldn't earn very many followers there either and just run into the same problem. I'd get about as far as I could in the next family, but I couldn't move on, but still didn't have enough followers to move on in the previous motor family I was playing in. Eventually I ran through each motor family and hit the same roadblock and was left with no choice but to go back and retread a bunch of events I already did just so I can unlock new ones. This was definitely not awesome and I wish they tweaked the amount of followers earned so that the flow of progression went more smoothly. The upside of that issue, however, is that it forced me to go out and explore the open world, which was admittedly pretty damn fun. The Crew 2 has a feature called Fave 5, which allows the player to literally switch vehicle types on the fly. For example, when I'm flying my plane near the Statue of Liberty and I have a sudden hankering to pilot my speedboat around Ellis Island, all I have to do is hold down a button, select my boat, and BAM! My plane disappears, my boat materializes, lands on the water, and then I'm off. The funny thing about Fate 5 is that it could be used just about any time when exploring the open world and can be used anywhere. My favorite thing to do is park my speedboat on the top of a downtown skyscraper. Now would probably be a good time to talk about the vehicles available in the crew too. There are definitely a lot of cars available off the bat, but you aren't going to find a massive car roster like you would in a Forza Horizon game. Instead, there's a smaller but carefully curated list of licensed cars, but still small. I had to keep reminding myself that the Crew 2 is about more than just cars. There's a nice selection of planes, boats, trucks, motorcycles, and race cars as well. Since I'm not a big boat or plane guy, I'm not sure if those vehicles are officially licensed, but they look legit, so I'm gonna assume that they are. When it comes to actually piloting all the different vehicles, they all do have their own unique feeling. 
And I'm not just talking about one type of vehicle versus another. Even different categories of vehicles within the same motor family can feel radically different. Like a regular street racing car versus a drift car, for example. As you can imagine, the steering angle for a drift car is significantly increased versus a regular car, and the game also makes major adjustments to controller sensitivity as well. One of the last things I wanted to talk about are how the Crew 2 holds up graphically. I've been playing the game on an Xbox One X on a 4K HDR screen, and within that particular setup, the game looks really good. Since the Crew 2 has such a big open world, I had low expectations for its visuals, as I figured the dev crew would have to cut a few corners to make everything fit. I was pleasantly surprised to find that not very many corners were cut at all. The game does run in full 4K resolution, and the frame rate is 30 frames per second rather than 60, and there is some slight pop-in, but beyond that, the Crew 2 still looks really good when it comes to vehicle models, and environments, and the game runs really smoothly. So, what were my final impressions of the Crew 2? I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would, but then again I came in with low expectations. It's an ambitious game and I think it accomplishes a fair amount of its goals. It looks good, it's generally fun to play, and has unique play mechanics and elements that set it apart enough that it can't be accused of being a Forza Horizon clone. It definitely has downsides like its always online requirement, some slow loading, and a short car list. Though I think my biggest problem with the Crew 2 is its lack of direction for the players. You can tell that the Ivory Tower team at Ubisoft really wanted to create a game that was incredibly free, open, and as unrestricted as possible. However, when it comes to video games in general, I really hate the feeling like I don't know what I should be doing next. I want more goals than just unlocking races and earning followers. I think with a little more player direction, the Crew 2 could have reached higher heights. Though by no means am I saying you should pass on this game. If you aren't a Forza fan, or you do like Forza but you want something different from what games like Forza or Need for Speed has to offer, the Crew 2 is a great choice. Just temper your expectations a little bit and you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of what this game has to offer. Okay, here's the TLDW for those who just want to know the good and the bad. I'll start with the pros. Now I'm going to get into some of the cons. Well, that's my review, well, second review, of The Crew 2. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing to our channel. And if you do subscribe, Make sure you hit that bell so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.